Hi everybody, this is Davis from Hardin County Conservation. Today we are going to discuss kind of an unusual visitor that we have here in Iowa, especially in the springtime and the fall. Uh, this is a migratory bird that you normally associate with the north woods of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, even up into the northeast in places like Maine and New Hampshire. We are actually going to talk about the loon today. So we do have loons in Iowa, uh, but we only see them a couple times a year. They, they like to hang out on our bigger reservoirs down in central Iowa, and then they do get them on the Great Lakes region up in northwest Iowa too. So we're going to talk about those unusual critters. I have a taxidermy bird from the old Ellsworth collection, uh, and then I have a story to read with our loon today as well. So we are going to read Loon at Northwood Lake. And again, just like our other books, this is another Smithsonian Institution book that you can buy online. $16, uh, or you can probably pick it up from your local library too. So we'll start with our story here. And we are reading again, Loon at Northwood Lake. A gray April sky hangs over Northwood Lake and the log cottage near the lake's ice-crusted shore. Loon circles high. Below, all is quiet and the big bird glides down. He lands on the cold water and skids to a foamy stop. He hoots twice as if claiming this small North Country lake as his own. So you'll see it's still cold. There's still some ice there. So this loon has come back early from his wintering grounds. Loon has flown far from his winter home on the Atlantic Ocean. Hungry, he dives, spies a small perch, and snatches the fish crosswise in his long pointed beak. He gulps it down whole underwater. Rising to the surface, he stretches, waggling each webbed foot out behind him. Then he naps, floating. Though dozing, he hears the moose and the raccoon rustling on the spruce trees on shore, and the tree frogs peeping. Loon is always on guard. So we have a couple things to talk about here. First, uh, loons do migrate in the spring and the fall. In the spring, they are going to migrate from uh, coastal regions like Texas or Florida or uh, places in the northeast along the Atlantic coast. And they're going to migrate to their breeding grounds. So typically their breeding grounds are in places like Maine, New Hampshire, Wisconsin, northern Minnesota. Uh, and they actually come back to lay their eggs. Now in the fall, they will migrate out of those places and they will go back to the coast. So that those are the times we actually see them here in Iowa is on those migration routes back and forth from their breeding grounds to their wintering grounds. So we do see them, uh, but not very often. And then part of our reading there also talked about how loons like to eat fish. Now you will notice if you look at this guy's beak, it is very, very well designed to be able to catch fish. Just like a heron, it's got this extra long beak. It is sharp, so they can actually poke with it if they, if they want to spear something to get a better grip on it. But more so what they use this beak for is if they have a small perch, a small sunfish, uh, could be smallmouth bass, a baby pike, crawdads, frogs, anything that's going to be living in the water, these guys are quick enough when they're swimming that they can actually catch those organisms in their mouth sideways. Now, they have to swallow their food whole because they do not have teeth. So once they get a hold of them, they're gonna open that mouth up really, really wide and they're gonna swallow whole whatever they catch. And they do like to swallow stuff underwater, but if they have something that's a little more unmanageable, like say a big northern pike, um, they will actually bring it to the surface to kind of corral it a little better and then they can swallow it whole there. So they do prefer to swallow it underwater. They don't have to, they can, they can eat it above water too if they want, but they will take stuff to the surface if need be. So we'll talk more about the loon here in just a minute, but let me get back to our story here. Late the next day, Loon welcomes his mate. She too has flown far from her own winter home. She looks like Loon's twin sister with her black and white back, her ruby red eyes, and around her neck, a necklace of white patches and a collar of white stripes. The loons greet each other, rubbing heads, dipping and tossing their beaks. They're together again at their old summer home. Like two figure skaters, the pair swim side by side along the shore, seeking this year's nesting place. So loons actually keep one mate throughout their life, uh, or at least one mate for about every five years. And if their mate dies, they can actually find a new mate, but they prefer to be with one, uh, just like lots of other species of waterfowl. Now, they did talk about some of the different color patterns that loons have. So this one here is a breeding individual. This bird you can tell is in its breeding colors because it's got 
all these black and white colorations on it. It's got that kind of necklace they were talking about and the little markings on the, the chin there. And then it's got those cherry red eyes too. So the males and the females both get those. This tells me that this is a breeding bird. So very likely this is a springtime bird. If we were to find this bird, say on the Atlantic coast or down towards Florida in the winter time or in the late fall, this bird would actually be more of a pale brown, gray, a little bit of a whitish color to it. So this tells me that this individual is definitely in its breeding colors. So that is how we, we know they are getting ready to make their nests or if they've already made their nests. Uh, and the males and the females will look very similar. So they'll have very distinct color patterns that are, are very close to one another. They come to a small, quiet island, far from the homes of hungry skunks and raccoons. The birds stumble onto the shore like big-footed clowns. Their feet are for swimming, not walking. They fling a nest together with beaks full of grass, twigs, and water plants. It looks like a big, sloppy salad. So you can see they're making their nest there. Now I will show you the feet of the loon here. Although their feet are similar to a duck's, these guys actually have more webbing and their feet are a little bit more elongated. So if they were to try to walk on shore for a long distance, they're gonna stumble a lot, just like they said in the book. They, they kind of look like a clown when they walk. So what these birds actually prefer to do rather than making their nests way back in a set of cattails or you know up in a tree like a wood duck does, what they will do is they will actually find a place on you know one of those lake shores up in Northern Minnesota and they will lay their eggs right on the shoreline. So they'll find a rock or a little grass patch or something that they can uh, build their nest on. Other times, they will actually build uh, nests in small cavities and things that they can access from the water so that they actually don't have to walk on shore at all. Uh, so they're very particular about the places that they, they wanna lay their eggs and the male is actually responsible for uh, preparing the nest site the majority of the time. So he is the one who's responsible for finding that nesting location. Uh, but obviously both parents, like our book said, are involved in that nest making process. In a few days, Loon's, mates lay, Loon's mate lays two olive brown eggs. For four weeks, Loon and his mate take turns sitting on the nest. They keep the eggs warm and shoo off egg hunting eagles and hawks. They'll also shoo off things like raccoons that they might encounter that are trying to eat their eggs. Uh, and also they say for four weeks, Though they are sitting and, and tending to those eggs. Typically with loons, we expect them to uh, hatch after about 26 to 29 days, so just short of a month, and those guys are, are ready to go and ready to hatch out. <clears throat> then on a cool, breezy day in May, one loon chick hatches, the next day another. Hut, hut, clucks loon, coaxing each loonling into the lake. Born swimmers, the waterproof chicks bob on the water like fuzzy ping pong balls. Their parents lead them to an island cove to feed. Cheep, cheep, the chicks beg. Loon and his mate poke insects and bits of fish and crayfish toward their small beaks. So you will see we have some baby loons that have now popped out. And they are getting ready to go for their first swim. Now, because there is so much parental care involved uh, with the, the babies, loons will only lay one or two eggs. So their clutches are very, very small. And you will see why here in just a minute. Stuffed, the chicks paddle contentedly on the shadowy water, unaware that a huge hungry fish lurks below. But both Loon and his mate spy the ferocious pike. Loon's mate screeches a warning. Loon dives, his dagger beak aimed at the pike. His powerful legs and big feet churn as he zooms underwater, driving the pike far away. So there we have our loons up top on this side, and then we have our pike down low over here. So not only can they use that sharp pointed beak to catch fish, they can also use it to defend themselves and their babies if they have to. When Loon pops up for air, he hears his mate's call. She wails. Her race, he races to her side. A loonling is missing. The parents dart here and there, keeping the safe chick in sight. They circle and dive. The lost chick is not on the water, not on shore, not caught in the weeds below. Then from down shore comes a faint cheep, cheep, cheep. Loon stays by the safe chick as his mate dashes towards the wee sound. It's the lost loonling peeking out from the reeds. All four together again. Loon's mates. Loon's mate lowers herself in the water. The cold, tired chicks scramble onto her back for a warm, safe, feathery ferry boat ride. So that is part of the reason that they have so few chicks. There's a lot of care that's involved in there, and they, they take very good care of their babies. But you can see if I'm 
Mama Loon here and I have those babies on my back, I don't have a whole lot of space to be able to carry lots of babies. So she can fit about two of them on her. And then once they're big enough, they really will not ride on her at all. They will kind of go their separate ways as you will see here in just a minute. But they do ride on, on mom's back and uh, they can actually hide underneath mom's wings, the tops of her wings, uh, to be able to secure themselves from predators and keep themselves safe. So very cool. They are one of a few ducks, or sorry, they're not ducks. Uh, one of a few species of waterfowl that will actually do that. So loons are in their own family. They're not ducks at all, but we do have species of ducks that do the same thing, such as hooded mergansers or common mergansers. Uh, common loons, they're, they're in their whole own family all together. So totally separate species, totally separate family. One puffy cloud June afternoon, shouts and laughter ring out from the summer cottage on Northwood Lake Shore. Loon has heard the, those cottage sounds before, but today something is new, something that looks like a gigantic fish. It glides out from the dock and moves steadily toward the loon's feeding place. Too close, too close. Loon screams a shrill warning. Flapping his wings, he stands straight up on the water and slaps his feet furiously. The canoe turns and slips away. Loon hears low, gentle voices. After that, the canoe never comes too near. So you will see our babies are kind of growing up down here in the corner. And we have the loon protecting those babies and then our canoers are coming in there. So definitely when you are in the north woods of Minnesota and you are in the boundary waters, maybe camping or canoeing or kayaking or fishing, keep your distance from those loons. They might approach your boat if they're, they're interested in what you're doing. But again, with wild animals, we always want to keep our distance as best as possible just so we don't scare those critters or uh, get them too accustomed to people being around. As steamy August crawls by, Loon watches his chicks struggle to fly. Splash, flap. Their wings grow stronger each day. One day, pat, pat, swoosh. Up go the young birds on their own at last. Loon's guardian work is done. So we have mom and dad over here. And we have our baby loons here. Now, in this picture, mom and dad still have that black and white coloration, but you will notice with the babies here, they're kind of that pale brown and white that I was talking about. So if the adults in the wintertime will actually look more like this when they lose their breeding colors. So uh, immature loons will look like this and so will the adults in the wintertime. Each loon now wanders the lake alone so they've left mom and dad. Many nights though, when light spills from the cottage windows, they call to each other. Loon wails. Loon's mate calls back. The young loons chime in. Sometimes, loons from other lakes join the chorus until the hills echo with wails, yodels, and a loony laughter. Soft oohs and ahs come from the cottage porch too. The concerts go on into the fall. So we have our loons coming out at night. That is when you tend to hear them in the north woods if you guys have ever gone camping in the Boundary Waters. They will keep you up at night. It's a pretty ominous call and they do have a very unique vocalization, but they're they are a very interesting bird. Late in frosty gold leaf October, Loon starts changing his black and white feathers for his gray winter coat, just like we talked about. He starts to look more like the babies now. He's restless. It's time to head back to his winter home on the Atlantic Ocean. Early one cold, windy morning, he skitters, pat, 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 on the water, splashing his feet and beating his wings. He finally gets up enough speed and lifts off, wings flapping hard into the gray, cloudy sky. Now, the main reason our friend the loon is gonna leave in the winter time is because if they are eating primarily fish and crustaceans and things that live in the water, if I am in Northern Minnesota in December, there is no way I'm gonna be able to get myself into the water to find all those fish. So this guy needs to find a place that is wide open where he has a long runway where he can take off with open water and where he can find lots of food and lots of fish around. So that is why he is gonna head to uh, the Atlantic coast or down to Florida or down to Texas where there's lots of reservoirs and the ocean. Uh, he has a lot better resources down in those places in the winter time. So that is why they're going to take off for, the, for those areas. Loon circles the lake twice, climbing higher and higher. He takes one last look down at his summer home. Below, his mate and young ones feed by themselves. They'll soon leave the lake too when each is ready. Before long, ice will coat Northwood Lake. A stillness will fall on the lake and log cottage until the spring sun brings back the loons and the laughter next year. And that is the end of our story. Again, that was Loon at Northwood Lake. You guys can pick this up uh, probably at a local library or you can buy it on Amazon online, but this would be a great one to have in your collection just because it's such a, 
a unique bird and one that we don't get to see a lot of in Iowa. So when you're out and about and you're looking for waterfowl right now, definitely keep your eyes peeled for loons. They will be out in some of those bigger reservoirs. Sometimes they'll land in wetlands too. Uh, but if you do have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the video below or you can message us on social media. Thank you.